Right guys, here we are. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new series on the channel. Sorry it's like a week or two late, but as you know, I've been a little bit ill. We are ready to rock. Welcome to hell with Fenerbahce FM20 series. I've really enjoyed preseason so far, even though it has been very, very tough. There's a lot of things to talk about today, but before we get into today's episode, please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. And let me know down in the comments if you are looking forward to this series. And let me know about your thoughts of episode one. Be muchly appreciated. Right, Fenerbahce. Now, why Turkey? Never managed in Turkey before. I think the league is starting to once again grow in popularity. There's some big players across sort of like the three or four top teams. Um, Premier League boys will know that uh, Daniel Sturridge is out there. Uh, and there's a couple of European players scattered amongst the three or four clubs that you'll be aware of. So I think it's very competitive. The clubs are massive. Um, big clubs, big fan bases. And I think the opportunity to really progress this. Now, Fenerbahce have never actually won anything in Europe. So that is going to be a big, big target of the series. But the reason why I chose Fenerbahce is because they haven't won the league for about five or six years. I think the last time they won it was 2014. And even worse... Even though they finished sixth last year, I think at one point they flirted with relegation. Um, they've had problems behind the scenes. We're in a lot of debt. Um, I love the kit. The kit is just beautiful. I'm eyeing up this one. I can't decide if I want the home one or away one. Yeah, let me know down in the comments. The home one or away one. Which 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 shirt should I get? Which one should I get? Um. So yeah. So the the, the a few things. Have kind of pulled me to board fan of Fenerbahce, big fan base, bit of a fallen giant. Um, struggled obviously in recent years, but have got the potential to not only dominate Turkey but hopefully make a bit of an impact in Europe. That is the plan, right? As you can see, I've done a little spoiler. I've managed to bring one player in. Um, it's Schenk Tosun from Everton, striker. We were a striker short. He was transfer listed. We're paying five. We've paid five million up front. And I think we're paying the next five million over three years. It was the only deal we could do. There wasn't a lot we could do. Um, the rules in the league, I think that we we can name a maximum of sort of like thirteen or fourteen foreign players. The rest has to be Turkish. So I am hoping as the series develops that we get in a really strong core of Turkish players, getting players that are in the Turkish national team and get them back playing in Turkey. Most of them are scattered around Europe. Get them back into Turkey and playing for us, and then use the foreigners once again to get some real quality into the squad. That's the long-term plan. That's the only signing we've made. Um, History-wise, there was a lot of ins and outs, so there's the only one that I've done. Everything else has been done. I think I've actually done a deal. I've let Portuk go. Um, he was on about 29 grand a week. We had no room for him. We got 850k. It'll just help towards something, balancing the books. And then we have this guy who's only 15 years old. He looks like he's going to be tremendous. Um, he's gone out on loan. Um, PSG were actually tracking him at the start of day one. PSG tra tracked him. Day three, he skipped training because I rejected a loan bid. So I've quickly put him out on loan, hoping... That'll get him a little bit of game time. I think he's made, He's only 15, so we're going to look at maybe two years loans and then get him integrated when he's about 17, get him integrated into the first team. Um, we'll see how he develops. We'll keep a close eye on him. He has signed a new deal as well to 2022, but we need to monitor that and make sure that we don't lose him on the cheap to one of the big European sides. Okay, I think that's the deals. But as you can see, outside of the season, we've been the club have been very busy. They've had, they have like they've seemed to sign a few older players, European players. So they had Roberto Salado, um, Matteo Valbuena had a couple of years. Did they have a couple of years, yeah, a couple of years. Decent player, he's gone. Um, Neustadter, which I remember, I think Schalke. Yeah, he used to play for Schalke and had three years. He would have been, a, he's a bit of a miss. We have got me. Um, Mikel Frey, or is it Fry? Decent sort of like centre four. We've all our strikers seem to be big boys, um, which I'll show you the tactic in a minute. He's maybe not great, but it'd be nice to maybe get some money in, hopefully for him at the end of the season, get him a permanent deal somewhere else. Um, on the ins, we've signed Emre. Already done. He's thirty-eight. 
he'd had a decent spell with us. Started at Galatasaray, had a decent spell before he went off at Atletico Madrid and come back. It's his third spell with us. He's 38. Look at those mentals. Aye, aye, aye. He's just banged in a free kick in pre-season as well. He's banged in four, four goals in six games in pre-season. He's playing in centre midfield as a deep-line playmaker. Um, obviously, physicals aren't very good. Natural fitness, though, at the age of 38, is very impressive. We'll get, hopefully, at least a year out of him. Maybe even two. When's his contract? His contract expires at the end of the year, so we'll see. He may well leave us and retire after season one, but the way he started, we'll be looking at extending that for another day, for another year and getting him to the age of 40. So, and this guy, Turuk, now, the only unfortunate thing for him, he is very good, the only unfortunate thing, we are not playing with wingers, we're playing with wing backs. I wanted to do a three at the back, so like a three-five-two. So unfortunately, it doesn't suit him, but he's actually done a couple of jobs. We've had a nightmare pre-season in terms of wing backs anyway. Um, so he's done a he's done a job for me in pre-season. He's he's covered in a couple of slots. He can play in behind as well. And um, we may look at that because we've once again we've had we've lost Max Cruiser um to injury. So he may be able to do us a job in different areas, but unfortunately he won't be playing in that wide right position. Probably the big one is Vedat Murici. Now he has been linked with Manchester United this week. Read into that what you will. Um everyone's linked with Man United at the moment. Um, he was the guy that scored the penalty at Southampton for Kosovo. I think he actually won the penalty as well against Harry Maguire. Um, I'm hoping that him, alongside uh, Cenk Tosun, two big strikers, are really going to put themselves about and cause havoc up there as a strike force. I'm hoping they can really combine. We've got him in as a target man as well. We just need to get good deliveries in the box from his six foot four. Jumping reach seven, uh, 16, heading 16. We just need to get bodies, uh, sorry, balls in the box to him. And then a couple of others. Um, Gary, Rodriguez, R Gary Rodriguez on loan. Bit unfortunate because we're not playing with wingers. However, because of the injury situation, he's been playing left wing back. And he's done pretty well, look. 7 or 7 in pre season. We're very happy with him so far, considering he's going to have to do a season. I'm not going to make the deal permanent, um, but. If he can sort of like fill in a wing back and do a decent job for us like he is doing, then I suppose we might get a little bit out of him. Um, Max Cruiser, awesome player in the game, tremendous mentals. We're playing him in behind, but unfortunately, last second to last preseason game, he got injured. He's now he was out for a total of three months, so we're not going to see him much. We're definitely not going to see him today, and probably in the next episode, we're not going to see him up until around Christmas time which is really disappointing. Hopefully we'll be in and around the top of the league and then he it will be a tremendous addition in the second half of the season. Um, Adil Rami, you'll all know him from sort of like the French national squad. He's been around a bit, Valencia, Milan, Sevilla. Um, then he got sacked at Marseille, didn't he? Um, and we've picked him up. The club have picked him up. That was obviously before me as well. Picked him up decent centre-half. Aging squad though, um, Luis, Gass, uh, Luis Gustavo's another one. Was a big fan of him down in the sort of like Wolfsburg days. Very good midfielder, um, but he is now 32. Another player that we may look at moving on at the end of the year. All depends on how well we do, but we do need to bring the average age of the squad down. It is a very old squad. And last sort of like noticeable one, Matthias Jorgensen. Um, his nickname Yanka. He was at Huddersfield for the last two seasons, so Premier League English boys will be aware of him. Right. There's, that's sort of like the, the transfers. We've got some interesting players. Um, we've also got uh, Victor Moses on loan, uh, unfortunately injured. Um, we've got a decent fullback, Hassan Ali Kaldrim, 29 years old, so obviously hitting his peak, decent enough, once again injured, but he's in the Turkish squad, so he must be pretty good. And um, there's Cenk Tosun, look, I think he'll be pretty decent. We're playing him as a advanced forward, which he isn't, Amazing at, but I'm hoping he just get himself in the box and score plenty of goals. Finishing 16 as well, so hopefully he can score us some goals. Um, Ozan Tufan, decent all-rounder. Nothing absolutely amazing. There's only one in 16, which is work rate, I suppose. Box-to-box -box midfielder, that's what he is playing for us. But he is going to compete for a place with uh, Luis Gustavo. So he's going to have to really make sure he's on form. He's had a decent pre-season though. Um, our goalkeeper's pretty good. 
Um, I think he's actually in the Turkish squad at the moment. Yeah, he's there. He's there in the squad. He's only 21, look. Four-star potential. Very, very good. Hopefully a player that will definitely try and keep on for the duration of the save. He's only, what, 21, so 10 years roughly of the length of the save. Hopefully he will be with us all the way. And that is about it. Oh, we've also got Ferdi. I don't want to pronounce that. People that are maybe watching from Turkey that have come across to the channel. I'm not great with names, so any help with names would be much appreciated. He's Dutch, but he's also Turkish. <laughs> Other nationalities, Turkish. Where was he born? He was born in Holland. He's eligible for Turkey, so you never know. He might. He's all right for us. He's gonna pass. He's gonna pass, obviously, um, the registration rules. 1.2 million. He's not played a senior game. He will do that for us. He's more of a backup at the moment, but only 19. Five star potential, but another one who will hopefully have a big impact on the series. Right. Finances. 21 in the bank. That looks good. We're currently just spending, we're spending 25 grand a week over our wage budget. That's because I had to get Jake Tosson in. Um, that's the only reason. That's the only problem. We have got money, a little bit of money left that we may transfer over. Um, I can't imagine doing us any more deals in the season. We have been very restrictive. 8 million. Um, and there was no money to spend up until we got rid of that centre midfielder. Debts. We're only paying the interest off at the moment, but it's accumulated to twenty four. Sorry, to two point four a month, which is a lot of money. It'd be interesting to see what happens with the loans. If anyone's done a Fenerbahce said before on FM twenty, I imagine these get re when they expire. So I've got one expiring at the end of. Season two, it's a big one. Be interesting to see how these are. I imagine they get renegotiated because we're only paying the interest off. These, these these debts still need to be paid. We're three hundred twelve million pounds in debt. So the series is going to be quite restrictive, especially for the first four or five years. I think it's vital that we get Champions League. That's going to be important and get in past group stages. Get some big money in. Um, I think the Turkish league isn't actually that bad for for money. It does pay, I think, so like three, four hundred grand per per win and stuff like that. So it's not the most poorest league across Europe, but European football is going to be key, especially Champions League football, to help us manage the debt. Obviously, we then might have to. If that doesn't happen, we may then have to sell. But I imagine if we're not getting into Champions Leagues, we're going to get sacked because the club vision. Sign high reputation players, so that's going to cost us money. Play entertaining football. Work within budgets, so always a thing. Straight away, we've got a challenge for the Super League. Now, we are third favourites at the moment, obviously behind Galatasaray, the champions, and I think it's Besiktas and then Transospor. We've got to reach the final of the Turkish Cup, become the most reputable team in Turkey as well. And then at the end of the season two, they're wanting us to win the league. So we haven't got much time in turning it around We've really got to hit the ground running. So I'm a little bit worried because pre season has been all right, but nothing spectacular. I am. People may ask me in the comments to change tactics and stuff, but I've kind of played so much 4 2 3 1 and 4 3 3 and uh, 4 2 4 so far on the game. I am looking at doing it something a lot different and we're going with a 3 5 2. They're the results. So we've done all right. We've not. We've only kept one clean sheet. Um, we've done and had good. Good positive performance because Inter we played really well um, and Porto we played really well but then we've had disappointing draws against teams we should be beating. So a little bit mixed bag. Um, I've just tweaked a few things over the last couple of games so hopefully after a few weeks the team will get used to the tactics and how we want to play a little bit more. We are playing. Our tactic is this. Very aggressive wing-backs. Um, a box-to-box -box and a deep-lying playmaker in the middle. Um, an advanced playmaker on attack. My target man, Marucci, and Cenk Tosun up front. Short of passing, but once we get into that final third, i tell you what, I, we are playing much shorter passing. Slightly higher time, I'm going to knock that down. We are still trying to hit crosses early because we've got the boys in the box. Hopefully we can build through the third steadily and keep possession of the ball, but when we get into wide areas, we are trying to get the ball in the box to them two strikers. Um, run defence, personal preference I always like. Be more expressive, personal preference I always like. 
taking short of kicks so it goes out to our centre halves, counter pressing and counting. They want to play attacking, entertaining football. So I suppose the only way we can really do that is if we press high. So we've got a high def defensive in, uh, high defensive line. We don't need to go that that high. That will do. Prevent short distribution. We want that goalkeeper to hit the ball long because we've got three very good centre halves. Hopefully they can get the ball down from the goalkeeper's kicks. Right, that is it. League table, 18 in the league. I imagine we just play... I haven't looked too much into this, actually. Champions League, we've got to get into the top two. Um, win it. If we win it, we get into the group stage. Um, 350k per win, 175k per draw. So a bit of money there. 34 games to play. Um, obviously, the big boys, we've got to look for where... I think we're third favourites. Yeah, third favourites. We've got Galatasaray, obviously. I think they're champions as well. Um, they've got some big players. They've got Faith Terim back, back in charge. But they've got some big, big players. Nagamoto, John michel Seri, Mario Lamina, Steven Nzonzi. What a midfield that is. Uh, Faguli, Emery Moore's on loan. Bell Handers there. My God, Ryan Babbles there, uh, and Florian Andon's there, Radam Radamal Falcao's there, Senuk Inan, I kind of remember him. Yes, very good, but he's obviously getting it, getting old now, but I can remember him from a few FMs ago. Ryan Donk, Fernando Musalera, the goalkeeper's been there a long, long time. They've got some quality players, no doubt favourites for the league this year. So we need them not to be performing at their top level if we're going to turn them over because we haven't got the quality what they are have Besiktas second favourites when was the last time they won the league they won it back in 2017 who have they got Gokhan Gungul I remember he'll be quite old now uh, what's he about 33 34 um, Lorius Carrius Liverpool on loan um, Vida Croatian centre half who had a really good World Cup El Neni uh, Hutchinson the Canadian but he's 36 but decent mentals uh, to wraps there now my god Adam Lajic Enkudo from Spurs uh, Yalshin Jermaine uh, is that Jermaine Lenz Jermaine Lenz as well so they're very useful and then there's a couple of other teams as well um, Sturridge is down in where are they uh, Transonspor they must have a half decent team Jose Sosa Jao Pereira Daniel Sturridge is the main man, Matthew Lecky. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough. And it's been made even harder because look at the amount of injuries we have got in the squad. I can't believe it. So I wanted, I had an idea before I started to save that I wanted to do 3 5 2. I then switched into, oh, I have Victor Moses. He started the game injured. He's been out for a while. What's he, a thigh strain? Time out so far. And he's expected to be out for at least another month. Um, and then my other right back has been out exactly the same. Hamstring strain, been out seven weeks, missed a whole of pre-season, still got maybe a month to maybe even two months out injured. Two right backs gone. Left back, haven't played either. Look, he's been out for the majority. Damaged foot, been out seven weeks and expected maybe another seven weeks. Um, I've had this guy as my, other, my only natural wing back who's been playing in both positions, just trying to fill a job in for us. And he's done all right in pre-season, two goals as well. One very, very good goal. Um, but he's got himself injured, only a slight one, but he's missing today's game as well. So my first four choice wing-backs today are all not playing. Bit of a nightmare, but as I said, Gary Rodriguez, even though he's only seven for tackling, has done a pretty good job, to be fair. And then just to finish it off, Luis Gustavo is out. He's going to be out for another two or three weeks. You won't see him today. And the probably the big one, the one that I was kind of most excited about, was having Max Cruiser. Um, hip injury. He would played a few games for us, actually, in preseason. Yeah, he played a couple of games. 7.23. Three goals, six games. Um, got a hip injury. He's going to be out for up to three months. So, bit of a nightmare start, especially when the board, the pressure is going to be on. I'm hoping we can just get through this first period. Um, we have a decent enough start. Um, we are playing Yeni Mantala Sporkulubu today. Um, 
they look like they've had a decent rise up the league. So even only in 2007, they were down in the third tier and then they've had a nice little rise. Spent two years in the top league. Last year, finishing fifth. So they finished above us last year. So it's going to be a difficult game. Nice big stadium, 27,000. And yeah, that's it. I think I've done a few little deals on staff very, very quickly. Um, I did sack most of the staff because they were proper shocking. Yeah, sacked a lot of the staff. I brought in some English boys in. Um, I kept my assistant just for now, but I were letting him go at the end of the season. I brought in a very good youth development guy from Birmingham. Um, you guys that play FM, if you haven't heard of him, you need to get him in. Fantastic youth development coach. Uh, kept the goalkeeping coach. Got a new fitness coach in from Spain. JJ Kocha, because he's an ex Fenerbahce player, is rubbish. But he'll just he's just covering the workload, lowering the workload in training. Next one, Billy Davies, ex uh, Nottingham Forest, yeah, Derby Preston manager. Um, got him in as a sort of like a defensive coach, pretty decent at Costa Ball. I was quite surprised he wanted to come, but we got him in. Um, Rodolfo Cardoso, he's doing the attacking for us. Very good coach. Look, he's been at Hamburg and most of his career. Look, as a player as well. Um, but very good coach. Wally Downs, ex Wimbledon. Uh, I think he's been managing. Yeah, AFC. He was managing AFC Wimbledon. I think he actually got sacked for something to do with betting and um, betting in football. I think that's why he got sacked. And then who's this guy? And then just another guy that we had who was pretty decent that we kept in. Right. That's enough. The game's gone on long enough. You want to see a game, don't you? So I'm going to I'm a little bit nervous just because I'm playing a tactic that I'm not quite settled on just yet. We've got no wing backs. <laughs> um, Gary Rodriguez is going to have to play on the left. Who the hell is going to play on the right for us now? It's going to have to be Denis Turek, the new summer signing who wants to be a right winger. But we are playing attacking. So if he can get into attacking areas on 16, get bodies, balls into the box, get these two in there, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be all right. How many subs can we name in? 10 subs. It's an unusual one. Right, 10 subs. I imagine they kind of pick themselves, to be honest. We've got a couple of youngsters in here as well, like, oh, Canterp. He's like, shite, rubbish. Um, and a couple of others. I think this left back, Omer Kaki, is proper Kaki. Uh, not great. Just in the squad. There's not much else in the youth team. Um, we've literally got the wonder kid that I showed you before and that's it. So hopefully we, over the next few years, the, the the youth intake is going to be pretty generous to us. Right, so there we go. We've got Altai in goal, Sadar. Uh, he's had a decent pre-season. Um, Jorgensen, I'm not going to play Sadiq. I haven't been playing him. I've been playing Rami. Rami, uh, Taruk and Rodriguez, two very attacking wing-backs, right and left. Emre in the middle. Ozan, box-to-box -box midfielder. Zaich. A uh, decent player, actually. He was only going to be a bit of a backup. He's playing just behind the front two of Morucci and Tosun. I've got all my hopes on them. I want them scoring at least 15 goals each in the league. Right, all done. Here we go. First game of the season. What I'm actually animating on doing, guys, is longer episodes because videos are only coming out once a week. So longer episodes, more in-depth going through how we've done over recent weeks, maybe play maybe 10 games in between, go through them in detail, go into the squad, uh, analysing the players' performances a little bit more in detail, only one video a week, but we'll try and get two live comms in every game, I'm sorry, every episode, but just because today I'm already like, what, nearly half an hour into the episode, recording-wise anyway, I don't know what it's edited down to, but we're only going to do one today, but generally we'll get two games in, um, as I said, one episode a week, 7 o'clock on the channel and we'll hopefully just spend a little bit more time looking closely at the squad. Right, we're in the blue kit, the third kit. Here we go. Let's get a positive start. I want to see that possession stats up. I want to see his dominating the ball. Here we go, Emre is good with free kicks. Oh, that was a chance, uh, The back post. Right, here we go, Emre, corner. Looks like we're going to get most of our joy from set pieces. Cenk Tosun was that off the bar. I think the goalkeeper actually cleared it. But we're knocking at the door. Here we go. Gokhan Torre is a player that I remember. First highlight for them. Set piece over the bar. A decent start for us. I'm a little bit happy. We've had 12 attempts, 5 on target. 
one clear cut, four half chances. We're dominating the game, which is good. I was a little bit worried that we weren't creating enough in pre-season, but so far today, it doesn't look like that is going to be the issue. It's putting the ball in the back of the bloody net. Right, passionate, half time, go out there and get that goal. Right, goal kick. They've gone long. Gary Rodriguez is going to get that down for us, surely. Clipped a nice little ball into Zayic. What's he going to do with it? He's going for a run. Tackle, but Gary Rodriguez is going to take over. Can we get a delivery in? No, Zayic hit his own man. Rodriguez. Muric. Oh, he's missed. Muric is missed. That was a sitter, wasn't it? Right, Rami. Rodriguez, Ozan, Zayic. Switch it out wide. He's not really wanting it, is he? Zayic is going to go himself. Oh, he's going to get it. No. Nope. Back to Emery. He'll play a pass. Lovely pass. Gary Rodriguez in good position. It's there. 1-0. First goal of the series. Vedat Murucci, the Kosovan international. We are up and running. We've been very, very good today. Start of the second half. Even better. Emery with a lovely pass. God, we're going to miss him, aren't we? Lovely touch from Murucci. And we're in. Malata spawn nil. Fenerbahce one. Let's just concentrate. 20 minutes to go. Very good performance so far. We've not limited, we've pretty much limited them to that one effort from the set piece. Right, Emre. Ozan. Back to Emre. Swings it out wide to Gary Rodriguez. We get a cross. He's going to cut in. Emre, feed him. Feed him out wide. Feed him out wide. Ozan, back to Rodriguez. He looks dangerous on this left as Rodriguez. He should have maybe crossed or hit it with his left foot. But it's another attempt. Another corner for us. 18 minutes to go. Can we get a second and seal it? Not from the corner. And he's absolutely smashed that clear. And that'll be end of high light. Right. Let's get a pause in. Cenk Tosson's not had a great game. Uh, we haven't got great. I'm going to leave him on. I think we need to be patient with him. He's just, he has, he's only been playing with us. I think he's been with us two games, I think. So we need to give him the opportunity. Um, Emre struggling. Let's go. This guy, this guy's quite good. Um, 29 years old. He's only got a year left on his deal, but for, a, let me just get him up again. Where is he? For a deep line playmaker, pretty good. Passing, technique, vision, all very, very good. Can he just help us see the game out a little bit? We're going to knock it down onto positive. We've had 29 attempts on goal. Where's this highlight going? Right. Come on. Let's not start with a disappointing draw. We've deserved a victory here based on the first 78 minutes. Their first little bit of build-up, we've got it. Gary Rodriguez. Ooh, don't lose it, Gary. Well done. Rami. Headed down. They're going to get it. Are they going to get a bloody goal here? Switch. Can we intercept it? No, we're not. Julien. Thievy. That's an interesting name. And he's got it on his right foot. Goalkeeper's done well. A little bit worried that was going to nestle in the bottom corner. What we're coming into the last eight, five, six minutes of the game. Tufon struggling. He's picked up a little knock. Let's get Jailson on. The Brazilian. Versatile. He can play anyway. Sort of like centre half in front of the back four and centre midfield. Right. Stoppage time. Mehmet, nice ball out to Gary Rodriguez. He's found Zayic, who's found a lovely little run. And there it is, we've sealed it, getting 2-0. Lovely ball out from Mehmet. Gary Rodriguez has been the heart of everything today. Slips a lovely ball into Zayic and a nice finish from my attacking midfielder. Right, game is still going. We've got still three minutes left. It'd be really good to keep a clean sheet because they've literally done nothing with it. I'll be disappointed if we don't keep on. The goalkeeper's pulled off a pretty good save there. I'll tie. And we're off. Yanka. Oh, God. Serdar. We've worked through the thirds nicely. Now Zayic has got a chance to run. I have got run at defence on. I do find that really good. One of my favourites. I like team instructions. Uh, Turuk on the right-hand side. He's going to have a go himself. He's had another shot. Save by the goalkeeper. Coming up to full time. 96th minute. Job done. What a start to the season for us. 32 attempts on goal, 10 on target, 13 off target, 4 clear cut, 5 half. Only 8 out of 32 long, which is always good. That's always the worry when you've had 32 long shots. 
how many of them are actually long shots, but only eight, 61% possession. And we married, they had 10, tar, 10 on ten on target, but they never really created a key opportunity there, did they? Um, very pleasing performance to start the series. Well done, boys. Right, guys. And that is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Please comment down below if you are new to the channel, if you're from Turkey, if you're a Fenerbahce fan. Um, if you're watching my other series, just drop a comment. Let me know if you've enjoyed it. I've really, unfortunately for me, I fell poorly right at the wrong moment. I've not been able to record this. So it's just been sat waiting for me to record. I finally managed to get one recorded. I hope you've enjoyed it. Every week, 7 o'clock, one episode a week. Fenerbahce, welcome to hell on the channel. We're going to pretty much go. I think we'll have a look at, I think I'll only play a handful of games while I get used to the tactics. So we'll maybe play 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll look at playing Trans on Spore. So sort of like one of the big first games of the season. Um, we've not got, actually, we've got... <laughs> and then that'll be the next episode, won't it? Galatasaray and Besiktas next to each other. We're not actually in Europe this year either, which will doesn't help with the money, but does help with the players resting. We can really focus on having a really good go at the title. We need to get... I think, I don't know, will the board sack us if we're in third position? I, I don't know. We'll have to really stay in touch. It's a title race, so we need to make sure we stay in touch with Galatasaray as much as possible, not slipping up against these smaller teams. I think everyone else pretty much outside the top four or five clubs needs to be beaten home and away. Right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you drop a like down below, and we'll see you next week. I am streaming, actually, later tonight on the channel with my Man United save, so... Make sure you hit that notification bell around half past nine, ten o'clock UK time. I will be streaming right here on the channel. Come and say hi. Let me know if you've watched this Fenerbahce episode. Muchly appreciated. Cheers, guys. See you later.